Shalom Avrach and welcome to the weekly piece on the Parsha from Torah Giants on Chomish, written by Rabbi Yitzchak Mayor Gimel, the Rabbi Meredith of Yom Yisrael Rockway. Sit back and enjoy. Welcome to Torah Giants on Chomish. I'm Steve Geller. Let's jump right into this pre-Pesach piece on Parsha Shmini. Our own sons, Nadav and Avi, who each took his fire pan, they put fire in them and laid incense on it, and they offered before Hashem Eish Zara, alien fire, which he had not commanded them. And a fire came forth from before Hashem and consumed them, and they died before Hashem. The Gemara teaches that if a student gives a halachic ruling in front of his Rebbe without first asking for guidance and agreement, he's liable to die. This is used as one of many explanations of the death of the two brothers who should have first talked to Aaron and Moshe before deciding to bring their fire offerings. Of course, such a sentence would never be carried out by a human court, only by God himself, as occurred here. There's a tradition that Shmuel Hanavi, at the age of two, made a halachic statement about and in front of his teacher, Eli HaKohen, who in response threatened him with death. Shmuel Hanavi was spared. His mother vowed that she would donate him to God forever, ad olam. Since the olam of a levy in the temple ends at age 50, it's intriguing that Shmuel lived to 52, exactly 50 years after this event. The Holy Ari states that Shmuel was reincarnated in Revelazar ben Azariah, who became the head of Sanhedrin at the age of 18. Knowing about his previous existence, Revelazar ben Azariah is quoted in the Haggadah as saying, I am like a man of 70 which is the sum of his two ages, 52 and 18. Rabbi Goodman doesn't quote it here, but I found a truly mind-boggling piece by Rav Pinchas Friedman, who explained Shmuel's mother Chana was a Nevi'ah. She daven to Hashem in front of Eli HaKohen, who thought she was drunk, specifically for a son. Shmuel was that son, and Eli HaKohen was Shmuel's Rebbe. The psaac that Shmuel stated to Eli HaKohen was that a non-Kohen... And isn't it a coincidence that a non-Kohen is referred to as a czar, could slaughter the Ola offering and it would be kosher. The halacha that anyone saying a psak in front of his Rebbe is subject to death, again from heaven, even applies to a child, as a decree from heaven is dependent on wisdom and not age. Rav Friedman even brings a Zohar explaining why Shmuel had to render the psak to Eli HaKohen at that very moment. Rav Friedman goes on to explain the whole cast of characters involve all Gilgulim and what role each plays step-by-step step in this episode. Chana is a Gilgul of Chava, Shmuel is a Gilgul of Kayan, and Eli HaKohen is a Gilgul of Hevel. Rav Friedman goes into beautiful detail of what Kaparos each Gilgul sought to repair and why, and it explains the entire episode with Chana, Shmuel, and Eli HaKohen perfectly. And although Rav Friedman doesn't mention it, remember that Rabbi Goodman does bring the Ari that that Revelazar ben Azariah is a Gilgal of Shmuel. And we must assume that as the head of Sanhedrin, Revelazar ben Azariah was able to be Machaper Shmuel's sin of rendering a halachic psak in an improper forum. Guys, it's mind boggling. I'm copying the link to Rav Friedman's piece in the YouTube description. You'll completely enjoy it. Download it, print it, learn it, and say it at your Seder table and remind your guests after Yom Tov that this is exactly why you and they should like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, use the share button below to paste the link into your WhatsApp, text, Facebook, Instagram, or social media of choice. Who wouldn't be forever grateful to you for bringing them this piece from Rabbi Goodman's life's work, Torah Giants on Chumash? Have a wonderful and amazing Yom Tov where all of our Kavanas and Tefillah should combine rise up to heaven and convince Hashem to bring Mashiach in this holy season of redemption.